All right, this is a submission from another YouTuber, someone who plays a lot of PvP, as you can see here, 26,000 games. Uh, and they've actually already done a video on the footage you're about to watch here uh, and given their thoughts and feelings on it, and now they've submitted to me. Uh, I actually already saw their video, except they play three games, and I saw the first two, but not the third. So we're going to look at the third game here. This is based on New Balance, so this is... A DP um, shadow uh, prep uh, trap, shadow portal preparation thief. So based on New Balance, this is a concept I actually really, really, really love. Uh, and so yeah, th this person is already going to be very, very good at the game. Mechanically, they're going to be much better at thief than I could ever hope to offer advice. But we can talk about rotations and maybe the utilization of the pool here and just see what we think. Could be kind of fun. Um, and so yeah, if you guys don't know what this is, this is a little series where people have submitted me some footage and we're sort of commentating on it and seeing what we think. Uh, you know, I'm not the best player. But uh, it's kind of fun to do. So, uh, yeah, if anybody else wants to submit footage, please do as well. I'm not sure how many more people will be doing it. It's obviously still early hours. But as soon as people stop, kind of the content runs out. So we'll see. Uh, but, yeah, all right. So let's have a look. Now, I think early on in the footage here, they're going to uh, mouse over their build. And we'll see a little bit of what they're running. It's basically very aggressive, okay? So they're going to slot on eagle runes. Eagle runes like supercharges dagger storm damage. They're actually on Bassy Venom right now, um, but they might put dagger storm on later. Uh, it makes your short bow cleave extremely good, and obviously it makes some of your spikes uh, really nice and juicy as well. Um, so I actually really like eagle runes. And then if you look here, exploitation sigil extra damage while your uh, target is low. Uh, even agility over on uh, short bow kind of helps with lots of auto attack bounces. And as you can see here, we're kind of running standard thiefy things, but on a dagger pistol set up with the assassin signet, it means you can get some ludicrous backstabs, like very regular 10k plus backstabs on light armor targets, okay? Um, and really the main thing we're going to look at is shadow uh, portal. The thing is, this isn't a 1v1 build. It's kind of all about rotating and moving a lot. So how a thief utilizes shadow portal is... Gonna be really interesting to me, and I'm personally still trying to wrap my head around the way I would play that, uh, since I've not really, um, you know, indulged in it post patch just yet. So anyway, we'll see. And um, so this is the third game. It's on Kylo. Uh, first of all, Kylo's a small map, uh, especially when you have ports. It's kind of really cool to play. Like I love playing Kylo on SD Thief. You know, that is a very, very port heavy, very mobile. You could dip in and out of the clock tower constantly. You can do some amazing things. And I think that Shadow Portal is going to be quite similar in that way. Hopefully there'll be some really fun things you can do. Uh, even any Mesmer will tell you, you know, in the classic days when you'd have a, uh, you know, regular portal. It was very easy to have like a portal on one node and meaningfully do things on the other side of the map. And you would just blink and then you could port the entire distance of the map. Not every map is like that, you know, it's so closed. And obviously you've got shadow step here, you've got infiltrator shot, you've got all kinds of things. Looking at the comps, it looks like he has two node holders. He's actually got three node holders, probably. A core guard. I actually don't like his comp that much. But uh, on a thief, this is actually kind of really nice because it means they can split across the three nodes and he just runs around plussing everyone all the time. Hopefully that's okay. Um, this firebrand could f uh, pose a problem though because they can force any kind of fight, especially with uh, the necromancer here. Even as a core necro, they can be okay in team fights, right? They can force any... If you're going to play across three nodes, these guys can just force a victory on any one place they want. And his, his allies need to be very careful about rotating out. So it'll probably be quite difficult. Especially since they have the hollow support in them. The enemy team's like a little bit more well-rounded, I think, basically. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, we'll uh, see how it goes and how we would play the game. What I'm going to try and do is predict what will happen before it happens. And we will try to make good decisions before the footage rolls out. And then, obviously, we'll see where the player makes different decisions, too, at the same time. So here, early game, we can see he just targeted his Ellie. And I'm guessing he's doing this to figure out what kind of Ellie they are. And I think from my mouse and over him, he could kind of tell there that he was a side nodey Ellie. And that way he knows, yeah, we, we really do have Spellbreaker, Scrapper, and side node Weaver. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the question is going to be which of the side noders pushes which points. This Firebrand doesn't have a Mercy Signet, you'll notice. Um, but is still likely to load out some support. There's a chance that they'll be more aggressively minded. There's a chance they'll be like a Condi Firebrand, but uh, I guess we'll see uh, in a second. 
All right, so with the game beginning, let's see where everybody chooses to go. Uh, it looks like they're sending their Weaver to close. I actually really like that. Um, I like sending the Weaver to close because the Weaver is the one that sort of does the least in, in, in mid, I think. Uh, Scrapper can do some support in mid. Not epic support, but reasonable support. The uh, Warrior, if the Warrior chooses to team fight, can get some good burst damage and some good cleave once her body appears. The DP Thief and the Core Guard can snipe a kill together. So I actually think that this is, if you're going to go for mid, this is the best variant you can do. Uh, but the question is now, is one of our allies going to push? All right, so the Thief is looking to see who's capping the mansion, which I think is a good play. You want to know that. Uh, and, okay, we just saw a phase retreat here. This means this is a Mesmer. So you potentially could go there as the Thief now. Uh, and I, that might not be a bad play either, because as this build, right, you're very good at pressuring an individual target. You're very good at sniping, finishing off kills, and pressuring with an ally, right? You're not necessarily great at the start of a mid-fight, especially in Clock Tower, right? These big team fights here, they're dangerous, they're scary, and you're very squishy, right? You don't really... I wouldn't want to be this thief right now here at mid. I really wouldn't want to go for this too much. What I want to do is get value out of my time while cooldowns are blown at mid. Then return and like snipe a kill more efficiently later. So going for this early is kind of a cool idea. You know, maybe put him in down state. Don't stay for the full cap and then come back. And you can even use your new skill shadow portal to do that. So maybe I would shadow portal here and I would go for this quick kill on my own. Um, but we got to wonder what our team's doing as well. Also, you notice how early the enemy team has started already AOEing and stuff. Again, I wouldn't really want to be here. But we've got two things on our mind. Are we going to push far? Which it looks like we will. And also, is the enemy team going to push out close, right? How outnumbered are we going to be at mid? How dangerous is this? Um, so that's what's on my mind right now. So someone is pushing. We can see here from the character name, it's the warrior. He looked a bit like a scrapper. It looked like he had a hammer, right? But no, no, no. So this is... So the warrior is going to push... I actually don't like this at all, okay? One other thing I do like is the Scrapper could push the Mirage, right? And the Scrapper can just stall that forever and can be fine against the Mirage. I don't actually know post-patch too much right now. But the, the Scrapper, in theory, can just hold this neutral. And then the Thief can plus it, and that'll be really nice. The Warrior's bat. This is not a good matchup, okay? Like, a decent Mirage can kill this Warrior. Um, so I don't, I don't think that this was a smart play. And now as the thief, I'm actually thinking, I kind of have to plus this now to save the warrior. So yeah, I think we, we do that. Okay, so he's stealthing here at mid. I could have mentioned that. That's, that's a, a good play. He gets blasts from his, uh, engineer who actually popped the heal skill. I don't think that's a good idea. I'd want that cooldown in mid, really. Um, okay, so he's doing it. No shadow portal, but that, oh, okay, is he, he's a bit slow, but it's okay to be a bit slow here because... You want dodges and stuff blown really before you go in. Okay, so he did Shadow Portal. Um, uh, and then Shadow stepped up early. This is like prepping cleanse early, which is nice. He probably wants to take Plasma. He did. He took Plasma early. Got an Interrupt too, uh, but didn't hit the heal skill. And then there's the Chaos Storm on heal, which he kind of a bit clunkily withdraws back into. Uh, he waits till the Scepter 2 ends. That's kind of nice. Also, not instantly plasmering, waiting for Day's Mantra to come out. That was one Mantra proc there. I don't have audio here, so I couldn't hear it, but I'm pretty sure that was a Day's Mantra. That's how I tell that more than anything else. Audio cue. Now he eats plasma, and this is good. He's forced the, the Mirage away, and he's let his Warrior cap the node. This is a bit awkward now, because that he never got the kill, and the Mirage might re-engage this. It's going to be kind of nasty. Also, let's look at the minimap. It turns out the enemy team didn't go for mid. They went for a big push on far, which is interesting to me. They're far, our close. Because I think they could have forced this. Um, they didn't, and even better, they went for that push on far, and our team managed to get the cap. Our Weaver managed to kite a bit there. But the Weaver's now down. So, yeah, with this node captured, I do think we return. I think we're going to race across the whole map now using Shadow Portal. And I think we need to swing something here. You might say it's too late. But what I actually say is there's two blue players here, right? One of them has to stay to cap. The other one's going to be vulnerable as he moves towards mid. And I would kill it while it's on cooldown. So I would actually be looking up towards close right now. It looks like instead he's still interested in the Mirage. Why is there a hollow here already? Was this guy just AFK at the start of the game? I don't know what this hollow is doing. Maybe he was late. Maybe that's why this is easy and they've got all the caps at the moment. So, uh, yeah, we come back to mid and we try and take this fight. The steel was a bit unfortunate there. Um, and the uh, renewed focus dodge roll 
obviously doesn't have much of a follow-up after that. He goes to hold the node, which I think is okay. i got to, like, pause a lot here because I've got to, like, predict what's... I don't want to just say what's happening. I want to actually get guess at what's happening. So, I do think that we're going to go for this fight here. You could maybe try and finish this guy off on close, but I think he's missed his timing on that now. I think we, we try and finish this. He held the node for a second, pulls away, and it looks like... So, his ally's dead. With the ally being dead... Obviously, you don't want to re-engage re 1v3, potentially. I'd maybe now look towards this hollow or once again try and finish this off back where we were a second ago. Because the warrior is in what is potentially a losing matchup here, right? The, the node that he won earlier is potentially losing. The fight that's going to establish on far, you kind of want to get there after it's already started. This necro is um, pressuring him so he can take free cluster bombs, and I think that's okay. But I would want to get moving right now. I think I would really want to be over at the far point. Um... What happened here? What did he try and do? He tried to heart seek. Uh, I think he was trying to uh, out of range. He was trying to steal up, but it never landed because the new daredevil still. That's like, <laughs> to, like, I would not be confident in the 600 range, uh, you know, like upwards across the Z axis or whatever. I'm just not comfortable with new daredevil <laughs> enough to, to even think about that. But uh, yeah, so it never manifested. Now he's coming here. I think he's a bit late to this. Because now the enemy team has already plussed it, you know. He's got so much mobility and he's uh, a firebrand is essentially... An enemy firebrand has out-rotated him essentially here, right? Um, coming back to... Uh, it's, it's too late. I think we need to leave. I don't think standing on this node really helps very much. Um, yeah, the hollow is stealth through as well. In a weird way, he's managed to like bait a lot of their team. I wouldn't want to be here. I would want to follow the hollow and I would want to make sure that we win mid right now. Um, yeah, okay. So he's shadow portaled back through. And when the hollow engages on this guardian, I'd go for this. In the meantime, you could pressure these. Definitely. It looks like his team's managed to win comfortably on close. So that's nice. Uh, so here we go. Now we're going to go for the firebrand. I'm surprised the firebrand got in earlier than that hollow did. That's a good kill there, definitely. I tried to get like a black powder or something over that uh, hollow and near the body right now. Um, so yeah, we can take this 2v1. This is exactly what it wants to be. So basically, this is a good scenario right now. His build works best when the enemy team is like one on respawn and he's, an, he's allowed to just keep plussing and keep forcing kills in 2v1 scenarios and he gets the kills quickly because he's got so much damage. So this is kind of what you want, right? You've got one dead and the stagger is sighted. Now you want to get this one dead and then as the other one comes in and you just got to take where that outnumber is every single time. And get the kill really quickly. That elixir S is really good. It allows them to recap the node and forces the hollow away. This is also uh, very good. So as soon as he sees the elixir S here, by the way, he's immediately no longer interested in the fight. He's no longer interested in pressuring the kill. Uh, and wait, hold on. How is mid neutralized? Sorry, what, what, what the hell is this neutralization in mid? Oh, they never owned it in the first place. I thought this was their cap right now. Oh, they just scored some decap value here as his friend was forced to kite off. And they'd actually traded allies there. I hadn't even noticed that. I thought this was their node. So, yeah, if this was their node, I would uh, I would have expected both players to go really ham on that hollow as, now that his S is up. But since one of the players has to recap it, it probably is best that they just leave the hollow to kite. And supporting this fight here is really nice. Core Necro is a great kill here. Um, I would not steal here. Whatever is about to happen, I would not steal. I would, uh, go in and I would pressure. Actually, uh, to be honest, I wouldn't even go in. I would just wait for this shroud to end. I, I actually would feel kind of vulnerable in these cooldowns. You don't have Signet for cleanse, right? I would actually just wait for shroud to end. The, the necro is low enough that he's going to try and use a heal skill. And what I would do is I would precast the, um... Uh, the F2 into a steal when I see the heal skill come up. And that's a 100% free kill. I wouldn't steal at all here until afterwards. Um, and I think that's what he did, actually. Is that exactly what he did here? All right, so let's rewind and rewatch this. Uh, obviously, he's engaged in stealth here as well, by the way. So what he's actually... So actually, his, his mindset is different to mine. And this is probably because he understands the pressure a bit better. I think what he's actually trying to do is backstab through the shroud. And he's just saying, you know what? Fuck the shroud. It doesn't matter. So this is actually a really nice engage. The necro doesn't even know. I do think this is a bit vulnerable because it's a core necro. It could just tainted shackles and all of a sudden you're revealed. And it's not about the act of being revealed is about the denial of the backstab opportunity right but so i think this is where all the pressure comes from yeah so we're going to assassin signet backstab right as shroud's about to leave ah okay no he didn't do what i said he he just went for the big pressure basically 
um, and got the kill before the uh, heal was even attempted, which is nice because you saw he had another player arrive. It was efficient. Um, maybe not necessary, actually, because uh, the hollow was coming. Oh, sorry, the scrapper, but still. Also, I like how the thief scored the kill and instantly left. Uh, but sadly, you'll notice his allies cleaved the body out. I would have loved to have left that necromancer downstate rotting off the node for as long as possible. That would have been really good. But uh, his allies wasted a ton of time cleaving the body and allowing him to respawn quicker, which kind of sucks. Uh, come back into mid, and we're trying to take this kill. I actually, at this point, I wouldn't go for this anymore. I think, especially with this resustain, I think you have to start rotating again now. I think really one of these side points needs to be neutralized. Obviously, this guy's come here, so I'd look towards the windmill or something. Um, I think there's too many enemies around here for too long. I'm not sure where that stun came from while he was far away. Oh, I think he got magic bulleted. Uh, also, the shadow step um, for the stun break a second ago, unfortunately, means he can't. He's got no follow-up for this kill, necessarily. The warrior actually sustained better than I expected in the moment there. So the double engineer stolen skill, they can just cleave through it. They do manage to get it. And the enemy mirage didn't really do very much. Okay, that actually turns mid around. See, I, I didn't actually expect mid to be okay here. I, what I would have done is rotate it out. Okay, now you could potentially take a plus here. And I would look for this as well, but... Your player's already scored the kill. I'm amazed that this player scored the kill because he's a scrapper, right? He must be playing a more aggressive scrapper. Watching for the respawn of the necromancer was also really nice. I like that a lot. Um, but I wouldn't be here, I don't think. I think uh, as soon as the necro realized he was outnumbered and moved away, I would have left as well. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't sort of still sit around. This entire move here, especially with more respawns, I would look at the other side of the map right now. I would be like trying to deal with this, I think, or moving over there, especially with Shadow Pool. Uh, he's doing it now. Um, and the warrior is swapping. This is interesting to me. Kind of ugly, because what if the enemy team now just like forces this? I don't know. Maybe it's okay. But he comes over here. It looks like even this was frivolous. This, this map is moving very fast. The players are moving around a lot, very, very quickly. So, you know, that entire sweep back across the map, that's exactly what I would have wanted to do. But, and both of us made that play, but it didn't end up meaning very much. It's okay, right? Because you've got a two cap here. So, you just don't go too ham or too deep right now. And you try to uh, keep what you've got. And if we actually pause here, you'll see we've got a quite nice positioning from our team here, right? The enemy team's gone for a regroup, and we've got for a reasonable regroup. I think it's a situation of the game right now where if we win this next engagement decidedly, and it might be tricky, but if we manage to do that, we get a really good hold on the map. Uh, what I would want to do here is snipe some kind of kill, get a decap, and then finish off the full fight. And that would be really crazy good. Uh, he's coming up on the wall to watch. This is way too hot to go into right now. There's just way too much cluster. The enemy team's done really well regrouping. Our warrior's been a bit slow getting towards it. Our weaver's taken insane condiverse here from the uh, necro. And potentially more. So he's going for the decap. There wasn't really an opportunity to pressure before this decap. So I think that's fine. What I would look for now is the um, weaver to see where he vapors to. And if he gets bled and I would go for a res. I would not take this fight. I would go for the fight here. I would not 1v1 a hollow right now. I would uh, make sure we win elsewhere. Like, it's big pressure. Like, that's a beautiful opening spike, right? That's what the build does. But he, he gets... A, I would expect this hollow to resustain here. I wouldn't expect to quickly win this 1v1. Um, and, this, uh, and all that damage could have just finished someone off, you know? Like a nice vulnerable core necro or something. He's getting plussed himself now. Drops a shadow trap before leaving. I, I hadn't thought of that. You see, I, this skill's cool. I, I wouldn't have even gone for the spike here. I would have shadow pulled and then left. Uh, I do wonder if his cooldown was available. On editing, I can even see here that there was a shadow port already and prepped before even the initial hollow burst, which to me is even more reason to just leave because the hollow will cap that node and then you just port behind him and decap it. And you just keep taking that outnumber advantage on uh, mid in the meantime. Here, the return in as well. Like, what opportunity do we have here, really? Even if he got the down on the on the hollow there, what what the the necro is just going to come in, right? At this point, the weaver's uh, death has been punished with a decap on close. The weaver might not even get there in time. The hollow takes the nodes. 
I would be on that core necro. Oh, especially with the lich right now. I'd get a black powder on that as fast as I can. Uh, in fact, he dropped out of lich very quickly. See, this is the kind of frustrating thing about this place, though. You have to spend all this initiative and time trying to, like, stealth up so you can get your backstabs. And it's one of those little... That moment we just saw there where he's having to stealth off the side. I'm not saying that's a misplay, but I am saying that's a moment where you realize, like, the strength of SD. SD just presses two, and it's already ready to pressure and, you know, do things. T to a degree. I mean, maybe some, some, that's somewhat an unfair comparison. Anyway, this is nice. The double headshot as well. Uh, anticipating the heal skill was very nice. This is an over-rotation. I wouldn't come here. Not with the warrior. I'd immediately look back to decap the hollow, who's probably got bored and left. Um, the headshot there was really interesting. I wouldn't have done that. Oh, it's because he has Bassi. Interesting. That's kind of cool. So, um, what we saw was a twist of fate. Now, after a twist of fate, uh, any weaver's gonna give himself stabs, so you wouldn't you wouldn't headshot. But here's the fun thing with basilisk venom, especially a double stacking basilisk venom, you can headshot the bassy venom, and the headshot will rip through whatever stability ap uh, applies, and then you get the stun. So uh, a range stun there. It doesn't really mean anything. The core guard could have got a nice burst a moment earlier. But yeah, the weaver gets away. They do manage to get the kill, and I said that was an over-rotation. That kill probably wouldn't have happened if he hadn't done that. Once again, it sustained the two-cap. The uh, firebrand is coming back in, so he's looking to make sure that this cleave is, is fine. Um, I probably wouldn't be here. Maybe my decision-making would be a misplay or whatever here. But again, I would be looking at, at mansion already, to be honest. I wouldn't be looking at this. See, look, the core guard has got this cover. The core guard is, like, defensively roaming between the two owned nodes right now. And this is just, like, all in excess. Mid, there's a beautiful plus opportunity in mid right now. Because you get plasma from that one. I can't remember where he's got his shadow trap. Is it in middle? Mid would be a, is probably the best place to put it, especially on Kylo. It's kind of like when you're playing a Mesmer, right? You try and get the portals in middle because no matter where you go on the map, you can always trigger it. If you put a port on windmill... You're kind of screwed if you choose to go to Mansion because you're going to be out of range of it and vice versa. But in mid, you've always got an escape free. You've always got time. Yeah, I, I want to be at Mansion really badly right now. Either Mansion or hitting uh, mid. Let this... Uh, is this guy a flamethrower? Did I just see that? He is on flamethrower. That's how he scored the kill earlier. Interesting scrapper build, man. Interesting. Uh... You know, this is this kill isn't an objective, you know, and the pressure to keep this guy away from an objective. I think the scrapper had on, on its own. This kill it behind. I didn't actually notice. Again, look, look, look. This is a free cap. I think my team's healthy. I would look at the health, the the health bars, and I think I would, uh, I would be comfortable that they've got this kill. And I think we could be denying more points and really solidifying our win. Now with several kills, he's looking for it. I think he'll go for it. I think he'll get there before respawns as well. This is kind of nice as well because we can shadow portal this, right? The, t the timing is a little bit clunky. Uh, uh, okay, so this is beautiful. The Weaver pushes, which means that these wasted seconds for the cooldown. And, that, and then he'd be thinking, do I want to get the full cap or whatever? He uh, he can now like get value because he's trolling this guy. Also, watching for the respawns as well was really nice. I like the camera positioning there. Just thinking about the players. I, I would be leaving this, by the way. I would shadow portal and I would leave. And I would just secure whatever kills there are here. Unlike on classic Mesmer, he can't now dump his entire team over at the far point and just win with a final big push. Except his, uh, you know, his, his close point. I'd, I'd dump everyone here except the warrior. I'd have the warrior staying at mid and watching for any uh, decap cross uh, uh, potential. Yeah, I think taking this kill is smart. I'd be back on the core necro now as well that we see him here. I'm watching as well for when the Weaver comes in. I, I, I would just play really safe and comfortable. This is exactly what I would do. I'd play safe and comfortable here. I would actually move over here and watch to see the decap because no one on his team is doing that. Um, and then the second I see the Weaver come to an engagement, I would um, go for that. Oh, uh, so he's going for another play. I mean, I wouldn't try this in ranked because nobody knows this animation. Nobody's going to do it, right? What he's trying to do is put the Warrior side noder on far. But the enemy team's already capped the point. I think it's too late. It takes so ages, so long to debunk a weaver. And the enemy team, the blue team's gone for like a regroup, if you will. Oh my god, the warrior did it. I just don't think there was much value there. I think I would have waited with that. Okay, and here's the decap. So now everyone's left mid. I think they're going to get neutralized across the board now. Because there's only two here. I think mid is going to get lost. I think the weaver's going to take ages to recap home. I think the thief's been put in a team fight here. 
And it's all a little bit awkward. Uh, the fountain kite from the necro is really strong. The core shroud stuff goes through this. He can't easily steal on that area. It's kind of horrible. So kiting off was smart. Using the fear to pressure through the, the terrain was nice. By the way, on editing, it's now occurred to me that this is probably a power core necro. Don't know why I thought it was Condi this whole time, but we saw a lich earlier, right? Um, so he's probably power. That means that some of the decision making earlier, some of the engages, were even stronger than even I was saying they were. Because there's no ri it doesn't matter that you don't have signal of agility, for example, or whatever. So, uh, yeah. He's managed to regroup with some firebrand support. Okay, this is good. So, with the shroud here, um, I would probably tunnel vision this now. What I would try to do is score this kill without using shadow step. And what I would do is I would wait for shroud to end. It looked... This, this Necro is not going to want to leave Shroud too quickly, right? Which is kind of the doom of the Necro here because your Steel is coming back in six seconds. So if the Necro hasn't left Shroud in six seconds, I would try to stay close enough that the second he leaves and he heals, I just steal the heal. The Necro dies and then I would Shadow Step Stomp it instantly before the Firebrand can really do much. That's what I would do and I would Tunnel Vision on this 100%. Necro got a really nice aggressive fear there, which pretty much eliminates the idea of the play. But you could have infiltrated Zarid up. The withdraw out kind of puts you way out of position. I love the Necro's position in here as well. You can't steal up there. Well, actually, I think you can. I think he is on valid path. The Necro needs to stand on the lip here. And then he's okay. But, uh, so yeah, that, that kill, that tunnel vision there, which is what I would have done too, is now not made anything. I would leave this. I would want my team to just walk out of this. I wouldn't go for this fight anymore with the dead uh, warrior. I would plus this engagement here. This has been going on for a while. Um, Shadow Portal isn't up, so maybe drop one here and just run off. And look, it looks like his allies are in disengage mode. He's engaging the node. All right, now he's thought, okay. By the way, I'm saying a lot of this stuff, and then the thief is doing it, but just a little bit later than me. I have the luxury of pausing, all right? The thief is, like, has to do it all in the moment, so I actually think his decision-making is very fast. Um... What's going on over here? So he couldn't heal or anything? The, and then he put himself in this kind of put the scenario? I would be so greedy right now. I really would be. I, you know, Do you know how scary this is for the Necro right now? He's fucking stealthing. This Necro doesn't even have a good spot anymore. Because he's fallen off the thing. Yeah. <laughs> I would be doing this too. Maybe not reveal myself. Like, you just have to wait. The uh, flamethrower scrapper kind of makes this pretty ugly, to be honest. Because now you're both doing this fight. The early steal, I don't know. I know that he just got jumped on by the Weaver. I mean, it's a free kill, right? It doesn't really matter. Uh, this is nice. Choking gas and then um, Skull Fear. The Choking gas can get one daze out and then the Skull Fear can get another. Weavers tend to not have more than one or two stab. So he, it, that was never going to go through. So this is kind of nice from the Scrapper. You definitely do want this kill or to at least keep hitting it so that the Scrapper can de debunk. But like I said, they were neutralized across the map. If you look on the other side, this fight that I really wanted the plus one on earlier, it's now too late. Our guy has been forced really far away, and the enemy hollow is going to get the full cap any second now. This kill's never going to land anymore. All that was important was making sure that we get the decap on far. This is going to be kind of ugly because of the respawning core necro. If the respawning core necro goes for this, I don't know whether the core necro feels he can get a scrapper. If he does, he'll go for it. And then this is your next opportunity. This is what you're thinking about. I wouldn't really think about mid very much at the moment. Because there's much, not much damage really represented. A firebrand and a weaver, your warrior can just kite that. It's neutral. The scrapper doesn't go for full cap. I think this is a misplay from my ally and makes my gameplay a bit clunky on a thief at the moment. Um... So here's the full cap. Like, I would go for this. It's not even a scrapper, is it? It's a hollow. Sorry, guys. I keep thinking that the enemy team has a scrapper. I think I've done that a few times. It's a hollow. I would definitely go for this right now. Look at how long they've been fighting. They're, they have no cooldowns. I think he's waiting for a shadow pool. I think that's what... He, he does want it. He just wants a shadow pool before he leaves. Uh, the Mirage gets on him. That's a lot of pressure. He's forced to blow a shadow step. That means that this, this is really clunky. There's no stun breaks here, and he's going into a hollow. And Hollow can just mash his face on his keyboard and CC the head out of you. Also, it's a very telegraphed plus, so the guy's leaving. Also, at this point, he's an, it's, it, another player's here as well, so it's kind of Zergy. This is a bit unfortunate. Here he's got the kill. His auto attack's rotating. He's taking retail damage. We know that. You could also look at the minimap, but it's easier to see little te telegraphs like this. So this guy is dead. There was a lot of damage they did while he was in stealth. Um, and I would do this too, but I actually think it's a mistake. 
I would do it because it feels really good to score a kill in stealth, right? And then you keep hitting to verify and you're like, oh, look, I've got it. And I want the guy that I killed to know that I know I've killed him. So you attack a lot, right? Like, just so that he knows, I know I got you kind of thing. But the most efficient play is to instantly just leave, right? So I don't know how long he's going to attack this for and cleave this body. He just keeps going and going and going. But the better play is to actually run off. Good foresight with the Mirage. I mean, to a degree, the enemy team is all pushing this. I didn't know that, though. This is a lot of torment. The Shadow Trap is kind of nice. Uh, what I would do here, if I really, if I could pause and know everything, I would infiltrate his arrow onto the node with no D W, A, S, and D. Die on the node while decapping. Or just get as close as possible in downstate. We can reposition ourselves as well. Oh, he goes for withdraw, which is cleanse, obviously. That's better. I wouldn't have done that. I would have got myself killed. That's just unfamiliarity of the build. And the fact that he's running the trick trait there. And uh, taking cleanse on that. So, uh, coming all the way across the map for a plus. This is really nice. I think this is a good play. Has to wait for a dodge. He does. Actually, to tell you the truth, I probably wouldn't have done that. I would have waited for a twist of fate and then a follow-up. And then I would have burst. Um, which would have led to me getting the kill slower there. In general, I think that is the smarter thing to do against the Weaver, though. Because they nearly always have two in a row. They very rarely, if ever, have three in a row. But they nearly always have two. Um, this is really frustrating that our scrapper just leaves. Um, and he stealthed himself as well. So I have to get on the node because he's stealthed. And uh, we get clipped by the gyro. That's kind of funny. So that's a decap there, which is really unfortunate. I think that there was a, um, a, a short bow three in the middle there. I think that was uh, anticipating an overcharge shot, which um, was the more conservative sort of high IQ play. I would have just tunnel vision that node really, really hard right there probably to make sure that the decap doesn't go through until my guy can reveal himself. Why the scrapper used the sneak jar in the first place, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but I, li I like this kill. Um, I think that this is... It was really important to get it fast, and they did get it fast, so that's nice. Uh, double stolen skill over the body to cleave the hell out of it now as well with the flamethrower. This should be a, uh, a kill here, and this should solidify the win, I think, right? Um... Because now all they have to do is pretty much hold this node. The Weaver realizes he's never going to get it. Okay, he rotates out. I actually like this rotation out as well. I think this is kind of nice. Because, again, the Weaver's got so many cooldowns probably, right? I know he just died and respawned. I don't know what's going on with the map here. I don't know why people are freaking out so much. We've got a Shadow Portal here. We can just uh, come back in a second. The only risk is that our Flamethrower Scrapper can't cleave the body and the, the Weaver at the same time. Is he waiting for a target or something? I don't know. Uh, so uh, they've had another incoming here. Uh, I wouldn't re-engage this, I don't think. Oh, no, no, they haven't, have they? What made me think that there were there was another player? No, 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 okay. All right, sorry. For a second there, I thought that there were two living people and one downstate guy, in which case the entire node's lost. I thought another respawn had walked in, um, which confused me, and then he returned, and I see that that's not true. So, yeah, I would return if it's just the one player. Now we try and kill the Weaver. Especially before the full cap. This Weaver actually wins this matchup, right? Against a Flamethrower Scrapper. I can't imagine a Flamethrower Scrapper beating a Weaver. So, in a way, he has to babysit this. The leaving was just like, you want to get value somewhere so that then you can come back for the plus later. But there was no value anywhere else unless he wants to sit there and full cap mid, right? So, um... We just keep trying to get this kill. It's going to take a while. And the Flamethrower the Scrapper's damage is bottomed out. So this is actually now really ugly because he has no assisted pressure anymore. And whenever the flamethrower scrapper gets in, he's not going to be able to do it. The best that he can do is try and hold the node. He's also fighting on his own portal. There's a point where you have to just decide to cut your losses. Uh, this is kind of really nasty because the enemy team made a beautiful play here where they said, no, we need kills. So we're, we're going to ignore cap full capping mid. We're going to go for this. Um... There's another universe where instead of re-engaging on this, the thief had, had full capped this, okay? And then his allies could have disengaged like this warrior here and would have just been able to bunk this and that could have been for the win. But it's easy to say that in hindsight. I don't think, I think I would have re-engaged too. Obviously now the enemy team has solidified this, so it's completely lost. The timing on this shadow portal is really kind of nasty as well, so you're not going to be able to sneakily decap with it. I don't think I've seen any actual, like, clean decaps utilizing shadow portal, which is one of the main utilizations I would speculate of that skill. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, okay, so he's trying to put his warrior over. 
I, I don't really think that's that high value, to be honest. I would rather they stay here and win the game. I, 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 I don't know why you risk this. You win on points just keeping your side noter here. I, I, I think he's... And the warrior, when he sees it, the warrior's always going to do it, right? You're not going to want... Because otherwise, you look unaware. That's interesting that that stealths him. That's that's cool. When your ally takes the paw, it stuffs everyone on the entrance. That's cool. I thought the stealth was on the exit. Anyway, so they've debunked it and put the warrior there. But now he's bunking this. I don't know. Like, And he has to leave it instantly. I, I don't think that was necessary. Now they've lost mid, right? <laughs> so uh, anyway, and a 3v1 on the hollow. I don't think this is necessary. I think uh, it would have been more interesting to try and save this ally over here. I kind of get the idea of coming here to Mansion because, like, this is going to be your node. It now is. And that's your win condition in a way, right? Like, when you're in the closing stages like this, it get, rotations become very easy because it's like you, you don't need much to win. So do the thing you need to win. And in a way, I get the thief coming here. But in another way, this would have been a solid play. Like, this is a free res off of mid at the moment. He's even got a shadow portal up here. So just leave, right? This met, this met Mirage is on full cooldowns. I know the plasma is kind of tasty. But I would look back towards that at mid there. Um, he takes the plasma. He's got to hold the node. This is horrible. Yeah, and he loses the nodes because his allies have to leave. The shadow portal there felt really bad. I get he was probably trying to use it to stealth out. I, actually, I don't know. I don't know why he shadow portaled there. You want to leave the node, right, when you disengage with the shadow portal. And you want to decap using it later, probably. So we once again decap mid. This entire time, that could have just been hours, though, you know. Another 3v1. I agree with, you know, hammering the 2v1 kills, but this is a... It's hard because it's kind of difficult to trust any ally to get a kill, you know. I would turn around on the core necro that's in the node behind him right now. This is no longer at an objective and he has a, 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 an ally with lots of health. So, so let me just express for everyone on YouTube. Hitting people on roads is really good, right? And pairing people off is really good. If this guy's got this guy, then fine. You've made a 4v4 on, on all the objectives. And that, that's pretty much good for this composition as well, right? Um, but 2v1ing on the roads, I, I don't really agree with. Uh, especially, you know, we don't know how much resustain he's got, realistically. Even if they get the kill, I think it's a costly kill, right? That was a really nice steal to get away from the low. I think that if he turned around here, it's a free kill on a core necro. And I think that they win this uh, this node very quickly and thus the game. Uh, I actually think that this game could be over already. It really could have been. Uh, there's not an objective here either. There's no players. I think he's realized that, so he has to stealth and come back through. I don't know where his portal is, by the way. I've not been observant enough to know that in the rhythm. This Weaver is probably going to prevent the cap and force that fight. So I would go plus the Weaver right now. Okay, he's doing that. No, he sees it and he turns around. I, I would I would hit this because your Scrapper's not going to win it. He's been consistently failing on that. I know that the rest of the game, it's been really a pain in the ass to kill that Weaver. But there's also been moments where you've quickly spiked the Weaver down. And I know that this fight's just starting. But I, this is the win condition here, I think, now. I think you go Mansion. Also, that last fight with the Scrapper on the Flamethrower trying to kill the Weaver was taking ages and was pretty cringe. But the reason the Scrapper's damage bottomed out was the Scrapper had no health. This time, the Scrapper's still very healthy and he can go really heavy with the aggression alongside you. It might turn out different. I, I don't think we've been on the Core Necro enough I, either. I think the Core Necro is the freest kill on their entire team. Even more so than the Mirage. Um, and I'm not saying that's because the core necro is bad necessarily. I'm just saying in terms of builds versus builds here. This was an interesting moment. I think I would have messed up. My instinct would be to steal into the stomp of this rally race. But I would have messed up and failed this because that's actually a distort stomp. You can see very quickly. Now the thief retargets and goes for the rally instead. His damage doesn't actually mean much in the end because his ally had a stomp. But it was a nice little moment that I would have messed up. So that was a nice play, but I think the Firebrand's coming and you might not win this. They might have to leave. Like, he's got a Shadow Portal. My god, and it's now getting really bad. Like, the whole lead is being squandered. The Shadow Portal towards mids is nice for mobility, but again, I, I, I want to go back to this Scrapper Weaver 1v1. I think that's the plus that I like most. The Hollow's a good kill as well, honestly, a lot of times. Those boons, like... When I'm playing Thief, I, I kind of like seeing a lot of them because I know I'm just my steel is just going to feel really juicy. Mind you, I've played more SD than anything else recently. Uh, where uh, Lastness, obviously, 
is further boon removal, which you're not getting on DP. Anyway, so we get this kill, and this is kind of now... Because we chose to invest in this, this is now the win condition. But I think, personally, if we'd gone mansion, we maybe could have um, uh, got both of these. I think maybe we could have killed the Weaver and come here, and we might have had a double cap. I think we could have had more. I, I don't know why their team is freaking... I don't know what the, these telegraphs on the map are meant to be. I don't know what that is. I wouldn't push a 1v1 here. Okay, he's not gone for it. He's going to go for the res. I like that idea. But only from stealth. Unfortunately, he's in short bow. I would black powder cluster bomb the body. Engaging on the necro first is kind of interesting. Doesn't that just telegraph to the necro that he's doing that? I, I don't know whether I necessarily agree with that. Uh, I would go mid here as well. It's a it's an Ellie. Uh, sorry, a Mesmer. It was an easy, quick uh, attack on that Mesmer there. The thought of the decap, I kind of like, but I think the kill on the Mesmer. Also, this is your win condition. This is your node, right? And it's about to get debunked. Also, your ally's dead now. So, this is horrible for the thief now, okay? If you're this thief in this situation, what I think you do is you evade spam on node until your warrior gets here or something. But you've got a core necro coming in. This is horrible. You can't even, like, resolve to die on node because the enemy team gets five points from this and you don't want to give them another five points from you. There's got to be a neutralization somewhere. He's just got to hold this as long as he can. He has to leave. You can't do anything anymore. Warrior can hold it. I think they've lost the game, unfortunately. Yeah, they've definitely lost the game. And with that kill there, painful. That was a real, real, uh, real hell of a game with a lot of back and forths there. By the way, you'll notice here that this went to timer. That was something I wasn't thinking about at all, and I maybe could have, should have talked about uh, some different decisions, maybe uh, somewhere up to 120 seconds ago. Uh, but yeah, they didn't even hit 500 points. A lot of back and forth. You'll notice he got top kills, right? And that doesn't surprise me at all, because uh, pretty much nothing was happening unless he was plussing it. And we could kind of tell that from the composition at the start. Um, that was a game that was like hyper-focused on the Thief's movements. That was actually a really, really cool game. I think that Shadow Portal can be really strong and could have had some excellent utilization. Uh, my entire mindset with the Shadow Portal w would be different, I think, actually. Uh, but I'm very, very decap oriented, I think. Uh, I would just use that. I would, if I lose a node fight or whatever, I disengage and leave the portal there and I wait until I see the player that was at it and then I just, I take the portal, I, de I, I decap and then I just run back to wherever I was and I would just play very much like that. That was a hard game. I can't say that I would have, I definitely would have made different plays. I can't say that I would have won the game. Um, but yeah, that was a cool Kaido, I think, definitely. Uh, let me know what you guys think. And again, if you enjoyed the, the series, uh, let me know and um, we can uh, keep going. There's gonna be a weird thing with this where because I can pause constantly, it's going to be like, I get more hindsight, I get more time to think, and I get to be more analytical. Uh, while in the moment, hey, who knows? Who knows how many things you really would have noticed. But yeah, fun game. Uh, submit any footage you guys like, and we'll see what we've got. I'll catch you guys on the next one. If it happens, hopefully.